What up, HyperChange? Welcome to another episode. Today, we're going to do an update on Starlink. Elon Musk has been making some major moves with his space company, uh, SpaceX. They're launching. They just launched 60 new satellites. Um, we've gotten an official update on when Starlink will actually launch. I think this has been under the radar as one of the biggest and most disruptive things that Elon Musk and his companies are doing. And unlike the fact that the entire global economy is shut down, the plans with this are actually still moving forward because, believe it or not, you don't need anyone to actually launch a rocket with satellites and deploy them into space. Space. It's all autonomous, so that's totally social distancing approved. Um, but anyway, the point is yesterday, uh, Starlink, which is SpaceX's internet service, their plan to eventually have potentially 40,000 satellites in the sky, low Earth orbit, beaming down internet, basically this next generation of satellite internet. Um, they say Starlink will deliver high-speed broadband internet to locations where access is unreliable, expensive, or completely unavailable. Pitching this as, oh, people who don't have internet can now get internet, but I think this is much, much bigger than this. It's literally a global satellite internet service um, that will eventually launch to the public and be the next uh, iteration of SpaceX's business model. SpaceX, um, I think this is a really interesting case study and transformation for where they are in their business model because they went from their core competency of decreasing the cost of launching rockets, um, got super competitive there, totally crushed Boeing and Lockheed Martin's United Launch Alliance in terms of launch costs, started to get more and more government launch contracts, started to get more and more satellite launch uh, contracts as well. And so they built a nice couple billion dollar launch business, but on the back of that reusable rocket technology, all of a sudden SpaceX had an idea and said we could launch our own next generation satellite internet service. This would have never before been possible because the cost to launch all these satellites would have been too prohibitive, but because we've dropped the cost so much, now it's possible. So SpaceX is actually its own customer here. They're launching their own cargo, um, these Starlink satellites. And this launch that took place yesterday that was successful was the sixth launch of uh, Starlink satellites. So they had they launched another 60 up it says in total they've launched about 422, um, about 415 remain operational, and a small handful have been deorbited um, in the past few months. So this is really exciting to see SpaceX continually launching, pushing forward on this Starlink initiative. And then we got a really awesome, the most important news about Starlink to me um, that's ever happened, because it's actually a concrete data point on when this will come out. My friend Viv uh, tweets at Elon saying, how many Starlink launches needed until minor or moderate coverage? Are you still targeting service in the US and Canada at the by the end of this year um, because that's what they had said they would launch. And Elon says private beta begins in three months, public be beta in six months, starting with high latitude. So this is epic. So Starlink, um, according to their plans, which apparently even with this economic shutdown, are going to continue launching satellites. It won't be anywhere close to full coverage or full speed or anything like that, but enough for them to start testing it, just like Tesla with its cars gets it into the hands of employees for testing first. I would imagine they're going to do something very similar with uh, Starlink. Um, and then in six months, they're going to expand it. I mean, that's before the end of this year um, that SpaceX will actually launch this to the public and potentially be in, being able to generate revenue um, from this service. And we also, a couple months ago, got news that SpaceX or uh, Gwen Shotwell, the CEO of COO of SpaceX, um, at a JP Morgan conference, floated the idea of IPOing Starlink or spinning it off as its own IPO um, and company. Um, and that got a bunch of people thinking, um, you know, everyone wants to invest in SpaceX, including me. Um, but now they're thinking of spinning out Starlink as its own business because um, it's more of like a, it could operate as a public company. You know, SpaceX has this whole mission of going to Mars um, that they don't want to jeopardize by going public. But Starlink just being an Internet service, um, they could operate that as a public company, spin it out. SpaceX could use some of the cash they get from spinning that out to turbocharge R&D and whatever other projects they have to get us to Mars. Um, and I think a really interesting clue about this is I was looking at Elon Musk. Twitter bio the other day, and he has like all the business lines he's in, and the second one after rockets is satellites. And so, um, I don't know, I just at a high level, I'm pumped because I didn't think you know, I thought Starlink was this crazy, you know napkin sketch idea that Elon Musk has. Let's launch all these satellites. Like, let's, you know, beam down an internet service. I mean, this is an industry that's worth hundreds of billions per year that they're disrupting. Companies like Comcast, AT&T, um, you know, all these satellite internet providers. I mean, this is a huge disruption, potentially tens of billions of year um, in revenue potential for a global satellite internet service. And that's literally six months away from launching publicly. And so I just don't think people have appreciated um, how fast the progress has been and how fast this is all happening. Like, this is coming. And the reason why it's all moving so quickly is because SpaceX, uh, you, you know, that technology of reusable rockets on this rocket launch, a bunch of the parts had already been reused and they're planning to reuse them again. And you saw those rockets, you know, land themselves. And so now SpaceX is really on, on this next phase of, of monetizing that rocket launch technology with this satellite internet service. And it's not a napkin sketch anymore. Like it's coming in six months. Like we could actually be using it. I think you're probably gonna have to buy some sort of receiver 
server um, that you'll have to install somewhere as well to be able to get the signal. And then you'll probably pay a monthly subscription fee um, to get the service. And that's how it'll work. Um, but yeah, super, super exciting stuff. I think this is a very, very underrated um, sort of aspect of disruption of Elon Musk's empire. And I think partially it's because they've downplayed how fast this is going to be, how disruptive this is going to be, because Elon Musk is disrupting too many things at once, frankly. Um, and I just think they're downplaying how high quality this is going to be and how much it's going to compete with, you know, Verizon or Comcast or traditional um, internet services. I think it will compete and that's their plan in the long run um, once they get enough satellites up there. But anyway, I'm going to be following this super closely. I'm trying to make more SpaceX content. I um, would love to know what you think in the comments below about Starlink and this progress. Um, I just think this is so, so exciting to see this all happening. And while we're all in our homes, kind of bored, like feeling down, it's something exciting to look forward to, to see these launches um, and see the progress being made. So congrats, SpaceX. Congrats, Elon. Um, and I'll see y'all next time. Uh, huge shout out to our Patreon supporters, producers. Peace.